You know what's better than Mahjong? Mahjong with a very tangential connection to Journey to the West. Professional Mahjong Goku has an elaborate backstory, and none of it is present in the game. This is the first game by Chat Noir, a developer that I would be shocked if you ever heard of. They almost exclusively made Mahjong games, and Professional Mahjong Goku was their flagship series. These days, Chat Noir doesn't make a whole lot of games anymore. They make Mahjong engines, which they sell to other companies so that they can retheme them as whatever game they like. Mahjong is one of Japan's great gambling pastimes. Picture a card game. Replace the cards with tiles. Then you want to build a hand of sets and runs, either drawing from the pile or picking up what your opponent discards. And whoever gets a complete hand first can go out. In Japan, they play Richi Mahjong, which has a very complicated set of rules for completing hands and scoring. Journey to the West is one of the major pieces of world literature, a Chinese novel about a monk who's traveling to India to get Buddhist scripture, but the standout character that everyone remembers is the monkey king Goku, who joins the monk on his journey, and whose trickster ways both cause trouble and get them out of it. The plot of professional Mahjong Goku is that rather than being sent to get Buddhist scripture, the monk is sent to play Mahjong against the various monsters that were in the world. And while that might sound very exciting, none of it is on screen. That plot is solely in the manual. Now there is something significant on screen, and that is how this is the first Mahjong game on a Nintendo console to have what is the now standard layout where the screen is basically an overhead view of the Mahjong table, with one player on every side. It didn't originate here, but the previous Mahjong games were both published by Nintendo, and Yonin Uchi Mahjong had a linear layout with rows for every hand. That also makes Professional Mahjong Goku the first Mahjong game on a Nintendo console not published by Nintendo. The game also has some interesting interface quirks. When you can take a tile that another player has discarded, the game pauses for a few seconds, blinking the tile, and you have to press down on the controller if you want to do something. This means if you pause to the think, then play is just going to continue. If you do hit down, you can always hit B to cancel out of that menu. There's also voice clips that play when you take certain actions. The biggest feature of Professional Mahjong Goku is the adaptive AI. Now, I'm not an especially skilled Mahjong player, and I think it's really obvious, so I can't really judge how effective it is. But at least according to the marketing material, the AI learns as you play it, adjusts to your skill level, and the various players adopt certain quirks. To be honest, I'm a little dubious that it's that effective, especially since the Famicom Disk System version of Professional Mahjong Goku is just about forgotten in Japan. Or at least I couldn't find anyone raving about how revolutionary the AI in Professional Mahjong Goku was. Still, even if it's just a few steps, where the difficulty increases if you're doing too well, and the players are more likely to pursue certain strategies, that's still pretty good for 1986. There will be more personality-driven Mahjong games, but they won't be around on the Famicom until the 90s. So Professional Mahjong Goku was ahead of the curve there. My feeling on this one is, yeah, it's a decent Mahjong game. It is very bare-bones, just having the usual rule adjustments if you want to set up something in particular. And I easily beat the AI, though that might have been adjusted if I kept going. But all in all, it is a very solid, perfectly playable Mahjong game that happens to have a few significant bits of history attached to it.